today I'll be doing a review on the Fostec T50 RP Mark III headphones. So this is what the box looks like. Now I have two pairs of these headphones. A Mayflower modded, so these are not stock. And I did buy these used, and they came with these pads, and which are Shure 1540 pads, I believe. And they also came with a Mr. Speaker's head strap. And then I also bought a stock pair. And currently I have the pads taken off. And these came with the Kony protein leather pads on here. And it also came with a Mr. Speaker's head strap. And I did buy both of these used for under $100. And let's go ahead and show you what the cable cables that it comes with in stock form. I do not have the stock flat pads that came with them. Now it does come with this really long audio cable. As you can see it can get, since it's really long, it can get tangled. It's about like 10 or 12 feet, somewhere around there. And it also comes with another cable, an orange cable. It's a lot shorter about three or four feet long and this one's more uh, springy bouncy and but it doesn't really get tangled so I actually like this cable better and a lot of people say this cable is really bad I don't have anything to really say negative about it I don't really mind it and in the box you will get a plastic bag where the headphones will be in and you also get your manual papers and specifications in there. Now, I did it, one of these headphones did come with an aftermarket cable, which is a V Moda cable. And once you let it drop to the floor, like that, it stays pretty straight. And this one is about like, like six feet long, this one. But it's basically kind of like a shoelace. So it's very thin. And it has the material on it is kind of like very like shoelace feeling. And to be honest, this is probably my favorite cable I have ever used, to be honest. It's actually pretty good. So that meets my uh, expectations. Alright, so let's get to the headphones now. So first off, we'll talk about the build quality. So up here you get leather. It's either uh, fake or, or real, but I don't, I don't really know. And this is a Mr. Speaker's aftermarket head strap, cost about $15. And this is uh, sheepskin, I believe. And then these pads uh, are Shure 1540 pads. And the material feels like, kind of like the material you have on your pillow, like that type of uh, cloth material. And as you can see, it's fenestrated, so it has these holes. And then as for the outside of the uh, headphone, this here is metal, and then this sliding mechanism is plastic. So to adjust the headband, you just slide this up and down, like that, and you do see that there's an exposed cable here. And if I were to put it on my head, which by the way, left and right indicators here, you put them on your head, and I just put my fingers here, and I slide them down and they don't look too bad on your head now what I don't really like is that this is silver they do have they did have a mass drop mass drop version and uh, that was black and this cable was black so it would have looked a little bit better anyways uh, the outside here is all plastic kind of a harder plastic it's not like the softer plastic that Sennheiser tends to use so this is more of like a cheap, uh, hard plastic. And when I do this, you can see that it's very uh, plasticky. But as you can see, it has very good uh, mo mobility. And back to, uh, to what I said earlier, these are semi-open. So I don't really, uh, you can still hear around you. But if you got like uh, somebody that has like a TV on, it will you know block out some of it at least compared to an open back. But I probably wouldn't say these are good enough for portable use. 
but they are uh, more than ideal than using an open uh, back. So that's basically build. And this one also creaks as well. About the same as well. Just want to point that out. So let's talk about comfort. So let's start off with the Shore 1540 pads. Uh, I actually do not like these pads. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why. First problem is when they are on your head is they're very shallow. So they do touch a little bit around here and they do touch just barely here. The good news is the material in here is nice and uh, soft. But it's very shallow so over time uh, it gets really hot on my uh, ears and you can also get really sweaty. And that's where problem number two comes in is that this material it tends to re uh, it tends to retain sweat really uh, bad so you might need to uh, clean these pads every so often and then the good news is the pads aren't necessarily uh, itchy they're very smooth and they are memory foam so they're very very like soft and plush so those are the good news but the bad news is it just I get really hot and, and it's just very claustrophobic in there and then we have the Deconi pads, which by the way, has a bigger lip. So it's a lot easier to put these pads on here. Which I'm gonna demonstrate that now. So basically you just get one side on. I'm trying to do it fast, but it kind of failed there. There we go, I got it. And that's basically how you put the pad on. And then you can do that to uh, adjust it and make sure that it's in. So. But anyways, you get the point. Anyways, these are also maybe memory foam as well. But I wouldn't say they're nearly as plush. But personally, when I have this on my head, the, the leather is a lot smoother and there's a lot more, these pads are a little deeper, so there's more room to breathe, so I don't really sweat in these as much. And then let's go ahead and talk about the head strap. Now, I'm going to have to admit this is probably the most comfortable headphone I put on my head because these are very light headphones. And this strap here is very comfortable. It is a tiny bit itchy because on the bottom of it, it is slightly rough here. And it's just a tiny bit itchy, but nothing too bothersome. But it is probably the most comfortable uh, headphone I've had on my head. So I really like this head strap. And I actually didn't bother to take it off to try out the stock pad. And there is a decent amount of padding here, but I didn't actually try that. I'll probably put that down in the description of what I think about the stock pad. But for only $15, this is probably worth it, in my opinion, at Mr. Speakers. So let's go ahead and get into sound quality now. Now these go for like $150 or $200 new, something like that. And I absolutely do not recommend them for that price. I bought these used with the pads and the strap for under $100. And if you got them used for about that price, they're not bad for that price. I think they're pretty good. But the problem is, is you can also buy AKGs or Philips Fidelio X2s used for around 100 bucks or under. And I'd rather recommend those over these. So let's get into why I think that. So let's first talk about the stock pair. Now the stock pair came with the Deconi pads on them. So let's explain the Deconi pads on the stock pair that's over there. Now what the Deconi pads do is they, they do not balance out the audio. And what that means is the treble is very uh, elevated and forward sounding. And then both of these headphones have like a uh, metallic bright 
a little bit sibilant and harsh and overall it comes across very sharp uh, treble and I don't really like it that much now I'll, I'll get into uh, these pads in the Mayflower mod because it tends to tame it a little bit but with the Deconi pads the treble is way too sharp on the stock pair and then the mids are kind of muffled hazy nasally and they're also going to be a little less uh, a little more not necessarily recessed because these headphones have a very intimate sound but the volume on the vocals on the stock pair with the Deconis is uh, going to be a little lower compared to the treble and then bass is also going to be lower volume and it's basically very bass anemic is what the Deconi pads uh, make the stock pair. So let's go ahead and talk about the Mayflower mod now. Now with the Shure 1540 pads, now I did try the Shure 1540 pads on the stock pair. Actually, let's mention that first. Now what these do is they give it uh, some more warmth in the low end, a little bit more boomy uh, bass, and it tames the treble just slightly. And the vocals actually get more sibilant on these pads. Uh, I did want to mention that the vocals on the stock pair or on these pair, uh, S sounds and T sounds are going to be more sibilant and harsh sounding. So I don't really like uh, these headphones because they have kind of a uh, sibilant, harsh uh, vocals. And the vocal quality is very not great. So let's get back to the Mayflower mod. So I just described it on the stock pair. Now what about on the Mayflower mod? It basically does the same thing. But what's different about the Mayflower mod compared to the stock pair? In my opinion, it does tame the treble a little bit better to the fact that I can actually put the Deconi pads on the Mayflower mod and it doesn't sound too hollow and anemic sounding. It actually works pretty well on the Mayflower mod. And you'll notice that the Deconi pads have better control in the bass. On the Mayflower mod, the bass is going to be a little more bloated and boomy with these pads on. And with the Deconis, it's going to be a little tighter and punchy and more controlled. Now, when I bought the Mayflower mod, uh, I do want to mention that the original owner took out the felt that was on the back of the driver. Where you have to punch four holes. Now I bought my own felt and put the, as you can see, I cut out some felt and put that on the driver. And then I also noticed that the original owner of these headphones took the cotton out, all of it. So I decided to put the felt on and I decided to put all uh, four cotton balls, one, two, three, four, in there. And then I tried them and I immediately was like, wow. I lost all my bass. So what I did is I had to unscrew everything. I took the cotton balls out, but I decided to leave the felt back on there, put everything back together, and I'm like, oh, there's all the bass back again. And that's something I want to mention. The Mayflower modded headphones have a lot more bass compared to the stock pair. Now the stock pair is kind of bass light. The Mayflower modded, on the other hand, is more of a base cannon uh, if you take those cotton balls out because if you had those cotton cotton balls in there you get almost like the same amount of base as the stock pair it's just a little more hazy sounding so I decided to take all the cotton out and you guys can go on YouTube and go to the Mayflower mod video and read like the top comment and there's a guy talking about removing the cotton and also punching out the holes for the felt and making sure it only covers half of that hole, by the way. So I just want to mention that. But anyways, I recommend you take the cotton out so you get the base back. So back to the Mayflower mod. So you get a lot more bass. It's not the best sounding bass I've heard. Uh, it's a little, with, with the shore pads, it's a little bloated. The Deconi pads make it much more controlled, and the Deconi pads actually do work on the Mayflower mod, because at least it's not too anemic sounding. Uh, it is a little bloated, and it is pretty warm and it very boomy. Uh, it is one of the stronger headphones in terms of bass, though. So if you're like, how does it compare to 5.8Xs? Well, those are more neutral. 
So this is gonna be more like boomy. And then the only thing that I think can compete with this definitely is M1060 Cs. Those are gonna be more about just as good as these, probably better, and the actual quality in the base is a lot better. And that's actually another point I want to mention is that these aren't a very good plane on a headphone. Because like I said, if you go back to the, the Mayflower mod video on YouTube, there's a ton of people trying to tweak the mods on this headphone to make it not sound like it's garbage. So anywho's, back to the Mayflower mod. So about vocals. Is it any uh, improved over stock form? Uh, with these pads, it's more sibilant. But the, uh, the Mayflower mod balances the audio a lot better and that's one of the reasons why it works better with the Deconi pads but overall the vocals just still they still sound bad i would say they sounded less sibilant with the cotton in there when i did try the cotton but i lost almost all my bass and i did not like that and they still didn't really sound that good even with the cotton in there so yeah and then what about the trouble it's probably better than stock form. It's much more tame, but you do lose a little bit of resolution. So that's basically everything about the bad points about this headphone. So let's get into some of the, the better points. So the good things about this headphone. Uh, that are both apparent on both headphones, stock or Mayflower, and the pads don't really make a difference. So let's talk about imaging. These headphones probably have the best imaging I have heard. They probably beat my M1060Cs ever so slightly though. Compared to other headphones, it's a big improvement, I would say. So these have one of the best imaging. And what that means is, let's say if you're playing a game or there's a song where there's uh, something starting here and it goes this way. Some headphones will have dark spots in the detail. What this headphone does, it's a lot smoother and more detailed between left to right and back to right. So these have one of the best imaging. Now let's talk about uh, sound stage. Now these headphones have an intimate sound and it has a very narrow sound stage. So it's not as narrow as the 6XXs, it's just a tiny bit wider than that, but it's still very narrow. So it's a very narrow sound stage. Uh, next, let's talk about uh, stereo imaging or just stereo. Now these headphones do very good in playing uh, things in the right channel and then you have a nice, nice center image and then left channel does that very good and it has some pretty decent uh, instrument separations but I wouldn't say it's better than like M1060s for example and what other good things about this headphone um, that's pretty much most of it uh, I do want to mention that I do like these headphones for listening to uh, like video game soundtracks or movie soundtracks, but anything that has vocals in it, I kind of just want to throw up because it's not that good. So that's basically my review for these headphones. I actually tried to do this in one take, uh, but I really don't really recommend these headphones. They have a lot of issues. And like I said before, just go on YouTube, go to the Mayflower mod, and there's plenty of people trying to fix the, the siblings in the trouble and the siblings in the vocals. And trying to add some bass and ultimately with the Mayflower mod they still they still kind of suck to be honest um so yeah the Mayflower mod actually goes for like over two hundred dollars and no way do not get that for over two hundred in fact you can get a used pair under a hundred that's what I did next uh, thing I want to add in the conclusion is uh, now the, the stock pair goes for 150 but then you have to add pads just to make them a little bit better and a strap for comfort, right? The thing is on mass drop, there's a thing called the Deconi Blues and they're already internally uh, modded and um, they already come with aftermarket pads and they're for about 200 or they actually dropped to 190, I believe. So if you're gonna buy a stock pair, it would probably make sense to get the Deconis unless you just get them used like I did. And that gets into my third point, is I plan on sending my stock pair to Mod House to get them uh, Argon uh, modded to see if uh, he can work some magic on them to actually make these headphones pretty amazing. But right now in stock form or with Mayflyer modded, I'm kind of disappointed in these headphones. 
So that's basically everything I want to talk about these headphones. So thank you for watching.